So here we are. This is the acceleration of a control mass from a Lagrangian viewpoint, or it's the balance of momentum on the control volume from an Eulerian viewpoint. It's one of those. It must be equal to either the change in momentum or the acceleration of the control mass. Either one will be equal to the force applied per unit mass. And it'll be non-zero if forces are applied. We know that we've got VP, I, G, S. We need to worry about viscous forces, pressure forces, inertial forces, gravity, and surface. Surface tension forces only show up if we've actually got a boundary for our fluid. So if we're submerged in a fluid, we don't need to worry about surface forces. And inertial forces are really all about the acceleration, how much force it takes to stop or start a chunk of fluid. So We've already looked after that over here with our acceleration terms. We've still got viscous, pressure, and gravity forces to take into account. The acceleration is equal to the force divided by the mass. We're going to wind up with 1 over rho in all of our terms to pick up this per unit mass effect. So the incompressible Navier-Stokes equations for a Newtonian fluid, and these are equations 6, 127 in Munson, look like this. And this is just the version for the x direction. So acceleration of the chunk of fluid in the x direction depends on the pressure force applied in the x direction, the three viscous forces in the x direction on the three different faces, and gravity in the x direction. These are a little complicated, so let's tackle the pressure and gravity forces first. Pressure force per unit mass, if the pressure is higher on one side than the other, then the pressure times the area is a force. The difference between those two forces is the net force in the x direction. So we're not interested in the pressure acting here or the pressure acting here, because they aren't pushing in the x direction. So there's the forces. The mass will be the density times the volume. So if this is the area here, then the area times delta x will be the total volume. If we rearrange this, we wind up with negative 1 over rho. P2 minus P1 delta x. We reverse the order here, and that's where we got the negative sign. Or negative 1 over rho di P di x. That term right there for the pressure force per unit mass gravity force per unit mass. Now if the x direction was horizontal there would be no gravity force per unit mass. But if the x axis is oriented like this then there will be a component of gravity acting in the x direction. We can write that as g of x so the force is mg of x. mg of x over m just gives us g of x this is the acceleration due to gravity in the x direction. And it'll depend on the angle by which x deviates from the horizontal. And it'll depend on that angle uh, in a sinusoidal way. 